Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching Video Voters Guide. We're here with Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Sonia Tobano, running for judge of the Circuit Court, District 4, Position 12. Welcome, Sonia. Thank you so much for having me. Delighted you could come. Let's get started. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you're running for this office. Well, I am one of three daughters of two very hardworking parents. My mother came here from Sweden when she was about 17. She lived on a farm. She wanted a better life, so she came to America. My father was born in a tenement in Brooklyn to two Italian immigrants who also came to the United States to find a better life. And I grew up in New York, and what that did was part of my whole sense of self is if you work hard in the United States, you can accomplish anything. And I really believed that. And then as I got older, I looked around and I saw that is not true for everyone. And I thought that was very unfair. And I wanted to do what I could to help people. And so I became a lawyer. And for 23 years, I've worked helping employees get their wages, fight discrimination, harassment, retaliation. I've helped people with significant personal injuries, but what I realized as I was practicing is that no matter what I did, if I walked into a courtroom and the judge did not hear them, treat them with compassion and respect, they walked out of the situation feeling like they weren't treated fairly. And I believe that being a lawyer and a judge is one of public service. And so I decided I want to be a judge. That's how I can best serve my community. And then I spent the next 10 years doing everything I could to prepare myself for that role by taking on every type of case imaginable and working with various boards and uh, community organizations to really understand the issues that we're facing in Multnomah County judges. Thank you. What do you see of the challenges that have been and will be created pandemic and how will those impact effective and efficient administration of justice? How do you propose to meet those challenges? Yeah, so um, I do employment and business law uh, for a large part of my practice. And what I have seen is number one, the courts have shut down except for providing the most essential services. What that's going to do is create a huge backlog of cases. And those cases are gonna have to be heard and, they're in the, and more are coming in the pipeline. But what I don't think people fully get yet is that when we can be within six feet of each other again, it's not like, a switch is going to be flipped and everybody who's out of work is going back to work. The businesses are going to ramp up slowly, which means that the financial implications of COVID-19 are going to extend far beyond the day we can all be in the same room together. So what I think we need to be prepared for is the onslaught of people who are going to be in the court because they can't pay their bills. I think there's three things we can be doing now to be ready for that. Number one, the legislature and the local governments need to be doing whatever they need can to extend deadlines for people to pay their bills. Number two, we need to shift whatever resources we have available to legal aid and the public defenders. Number three, there are a lot of people in the community with mental health care issues that were literally hanging by a thread before COVID-19 those people are off a cliff at this point, and they're gonna end up in front of the court system. And so what we need to do is ensure that there are resources in the court system when those people find themselves there to help them get the help that they need. It's not being within the criminal justice system. Thank you. What is your philosophy of the purpose of sentencing in criminal cases? At its most basic level, a sentence in a criminal case is supposed to right a wrong that has been done by someone to an individual or society. But I think what we've seen is that system and that approach, it doesn't work. And you can see it by looking at several things. Number one, a number of repeat offenders. Number two, the disproportionate impact on communities of color and multivariate communities. And number three, the people who end up in the criminal court system who really shouldn't be there people with mental health issues, people facing addiction issues, people facing houselessness issues. So what I learned, I was on the board of Southeast Works, this amazing organization in Southeast Portland. And what they do is they work with people while they're still in prison or jail and they work with them outside and they get them the resources, training, create support systems, and they put them in place so that when they get out, they won't make decisions or be forced to make the decisions that put them in the criminal justice system in the first place. And they have one of the best 
uh, records in the country on this. What I would like to do is see a more holistic approach to sentencing. So if everyone is on board, you get both the person who has been harmed, the person who has committed the crime, the judges, the lawyers, and any other resources that can help those individuals, number one, come up with a solution or a resolution that the person who's been harmed feels is just, and number two, gives the person who's committed the crime resources, information, skills, training, so that they don't find themselves back in the criminal justice system once they're released. Thank you. How would you, as a trial court judge, seek to improve the administration of justice within your own courtroom? Yeah. Well, as I said, I, you know, going into court is uh, very scary. If you don't have a lawyer, it's like going to a foreign land and not speaking the language. And already access to justice is a huge problem uh, everywhere in the country and in Oregon as well. We don't have enough lawyers for the people that need them. And I think that problem is going to be exacerba exacerbated after COVID-19. So what I would do is threefold. I would continue to do the work that I've already been doing for 10 years with the Campaign for Equal Justice, which is an organization that raises money for legal aid and also increases awareness in the public's mind about why legal aid is so important. You might not need a lawyer paid for through legal aid, but believe me, it will help you if someone who needs one does. Number two, I also wanna make sure that there's information in digestible format to people who don't have a lawyer who come into the courthouse just about the legal process. I think that will help them as they navigate their way and it will help all the parties involved. Number three, as a settlement judge, judge as a judge, a lot of judges, you do settlement conferences. And I will work very hard to make sure that I connect with both parties and help them recognize the human element of what's at stake and come up with resolutions that do more good than harm. Thank you. And our last question, in your opinion, should voters consider a judge's sentencing record compared to that of other judges on the other judges on the same court for the offenses and why or why not? I think voters should have as much information and get as much information as they can for anyone who's running for office, including a judge. Unfortunately, I don't think there is a lot of information about judges that's out there. And that's one of the reasons I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and that you are putting uh, this information out there for the public. With respect to sentencing records, I don't know if that's the best way to decide whether or not someone is a judge that you would support because every criminal case is a little different. There may be some, um, uh, there may be some uh, uh, factors that are taken into account in one case that aren't in another case. And uh, there also may be uh, limits on the discretion that the judge can um, exercise. And so I think what you need to do is look at how does that judge approach sentencing in different cases. And as I said earlier, I believe that in places where it's appropriate to engage in restorative justice or take a holistic approach, let's go there and do that. That's the information I think people should be looking for. Thank you very much. Um, you have about 20 seconds if there's one more thing you wanna say. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with people about why I'm running for Multnomah County Court. I hope that you visit my website, soniaforjudge.com. I have a Facebook page, learn more about why I'm running. I'm honored to have more endorsements by any other sitting judges uh, than any of my fellow candidates. And that really instills me with a lot of confidence that they believe I can do this job and I'm ready to do it. I'm gonna hit the ground running and I'm gonna serve the people of Portland to the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org to learn more about the candidates and races on your ballot and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.